Hello. All right. Welcome to Shader Art Day 13, March 5th. All right. So this is the beginning of the uh, well, it's the third week. Uh, so we had a limit. We put a limitation on the first uh, two weeks to only do 2D art. So now we are finally going to do a 3D ray trace scene today. Oh, that is a black screen, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Fix this. Um, there we go. Alright. So, this was yesterday's scene, Sundance. This was done with 2D wave interference. And then we just, uh, actually, that's actually grayscale, and then we just mixed between blue and yellow with our color. So today I already have a pretty good idea of what I want to do, because I have wanted to do 3D scenes for a few weeks now. Uh, it's just going to be a very simple raymarked scene, not even have any lighting. Uh, so let's get started. Oh my god, hold on a second though. My camera is... Jesus Christ, this thing is uh, it's bright. I guess as the sun goes down, it'll get better. Oh, there we go. Alright. So let's start with a blank shader to begin. There we go. So a green solid screen. This is going to be our starting point. I actually have the UV zooming out to disable that. Okay, so now we're going to create... So the first part of creating this 3D scene is we're going to need our ray position for ray trace. We're going to need our ray position and ray direction. So for this... Um, this is actually going to be a scene I've already made before. It's going to be a, uh, a Mobius strip. I actually think I still have it here. No, that's not it. No. Well, I I guess I deleted it. Oh my god, why did I delete that? It's probably actually at a hard drive somewhere. Well, I guess we're going to be recoding this. So anyways, it's a Mobius band. Loops around. Um, I should repeat. So actually, I'm not sure if we're going to do a Mobius band. Let's just go with this and just start with the raid marker to begin. So we're going to create... So this one right here actually decides the field of view. Uh, this is the Z tangent. So one should be a field of view of 90 on the horizontal, and then a bit more on the or on the vertical, and a bit more on the horizontal where it's stretched. Then our ray position is going to start at zero. I actually think I wanted to start a little bit back right here. To begin, I'm just going to do a very simple scene. We're going to create our function for our scene. Yeah, actually, I'm going to call it geometry. It's geometry distance. Uh, to begin, I'm just going to do. I'm just going to do a flat plane. Just then to remark this here, we have our iterations. Start out with three. 
What else are you gonna do? Epsilon. I was thinking about doing those as macros, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write this right here. The epsilon actually might be good as macro. All right, so then float distance equals geometry and the position. Then if the distance small zero. And we have a hip. Uh, what are we going to do here? So this is where we actually just color the ray. So I'm just going to set G all frag color here. Hmm. Right, I'm going to set it to gray for a background. Let's do this properly. C is going to be the color. Or 0.2, a gray background. Here we're going to set it to white, saying it hit something. It's going to break out of the loop. And then here we're going to output the color. Alright, now the main part of the ray marking. Increase the ray position by the distance. And we actually, this is a little trick I do now. Instead of checking that's smaller than the epsilon, we add the epsilon here. And when we're actually doing the coloring here, we back up a little bit. Alright, that's the whole ray marking. There are too much data in Constructor. XY. There we go. Okay, so that is our plane right there. If we increase the iterations, this will go farther. Uh, this is pretty good to begin. So what I want to do is I actually want to do like a ladder looping around in like a torus. So we're going to start out with a torus, which is... Um, You calculate the length of a sphere that is uh, x and y is rotating around like this. That might be wrong. Got an x, y, small and zero. Oh, this is supposed to be negative four. I think. Wait, never mind. Um, negative four, so it goes forward. Forest has a radius of point two five.
Well, there must be something wrong with the distance function. Yeah, so that is working properly right there. What's happening when it's doing normalize p.xy? Maybe this ends up being zero. Oh my god, I think because it ends up being zero, it ends up not showing up here. Ooh. Oh my god, there we go. So there's our donut. See how the iterations affect this. They don't really affect it that much. Awesome. Alright, so now we are actually going to have it loop around where our camera is going to spin around in the torus. So let's actually add some coloring so that you can tell what's going on. We're going to grab our HSV function. Here we're going to do HSV to red, green, blue. And the hue is going to end up being dependent on the position. Right now it's going to be red. What we're going to do is we're going to do, um, just what we're going to make the ring bigger. We're going to do, I guess, ATAN. Now let's make it wrapping. There we go. Okay, so now we have a perfect HSV ring. Actually, that loops twice. There we go. That's a perfect, perfect HSV ring. So what it's going to do, it's actually going to loop around there and where it we're also going to add a little bit of uh, the shading here. Oh, actually, that's going to be the saturation. That should make the saturation, oh, should make it go to white. What I'm trying to go for is have it go to white from the colors to white.
I don't understand why it's oh value is supposed to be one here. Okay, there we go. Here we go. That's what I'm going for. Okay. So now we're actually going to have the camera go around this. So first of all, we're going to turn the loop around. So it's a YZ instead of XZ. center to begin. And then this is going to become YZ. There we go. Okay. Now we need to... We're going to need to rotate the ray direction and the ray position together, I believe. Now let's rotate it. Don't have our R2 function here, but we'll, we'll make one. Z of each by that. Oh, that's going backwards. Oh yeah, okay, and now you can't really see that it's moving that much besides the colors. Could also add some anti-aliasing to this. I feel like just doing a simple 3D shader today though to begin. Okay, so now we're gonna add the lattice that I wanna add to this. So this isn't going to be a circular torus like this. This is going to, um, actually, I want it to be like a ladder. So I'm just thinking about how, how I would do that. I know how to change the length function here to make this square. I'm just thinking how I would put holes in it.
I think doing it separately, so doing two rings side by side and mirrored. going to be the two main parts. Now we need uh, cross sections going between each of these. I'm also wondering, should I increase the saturation here? Oh no, that's much. I'm going to need to adjust that color and value though. Anyways, this is nice. I'll be able to adjust actually all of the size options here. Okay, so now we need to add cross bars going between this. So this is going to be kind of weird, this being a... Um, if this is two toruses, what I'm almost thinking of doing is like... Could I do repeating toruses around... around the normal here? Like, what if I do modulo normalized? could do a rough temporal anti-aliasing here. I also could even just do multi-sample anti-aliasing if I wanted to. I think the proper way to do this is to do a tan repeat. Mm. I don't want to try and do normalized repeat. the thing, what if I created a fact where it was like an infinite plane? Alright, 
Let's try mod and P. Mm. How would I make a plane out of this? I would take the length of it, right? Max. We got X so that it's within this range. There we go. Now let's see if we can add repetition to this. Hey, Scallywag, I'm finally doing this ray tracing stream. So this is a torus, and the camera is rotating around the torus and going around it. I'm trying to add like crossbars to it, so it's almost like a ladder. I'm just gonna try some hack. This isn't gonna make a proper distance function, but... This should give a pretty weird effect. <laughs> oh, this is actually kind of the effect I'm looking for. This is like glitch art. Oh man. This actually might be it. Very low resolution. See if we can fix this up. I think that's just because it is a sine function. I think we just gotta make ATAM repeat. Or make ATAM repeat properly. So, 
Yeah, I wonder about doing a distance function in ang angle space here. I think because it's far enough away from the center, it'll actually work correctly. But we'll see. So we gotta, first of all, we gotta repeat here. Uh, so we'll do mod. Also, we're gonna do divided by 3.14 so it stops being based around pi. And then we gotta choose how much we want it to repeat. Um, Two point minus one point, so it's based from. Oh, okay. So this is actually this is going to be the diff difficult part. We're going to need to scale the distance function. Oh my God! Wait. I could just scale the distance function here with the sine wave. Like if I just scale this down, it should actually fix the artifacts. Yeah, there we go, now it's perfectly smooth. So then I believe the effect I'm looking for is like this. Yeah. Try messing with the field of view a little bit. Also, I think I might, I'm probably going to be able to afford anti aliasing with this because it's honestly so cheap. There we go. So that actually gives the effect I'm looking for. <laughs> so those actually go for infinity. But I don't. I actually want the effect here to, of them to look like they're like flaps that aren't, don't go to infinity. So this just limits the view distance, so it looks like it doesn't go to infinity, but it actually does. Which you see if you turn up the iterations, like right here. You see the white stretches forever. Boom. So then we're gonna be able to afford anti-aliasing with this. Um, Let me try changing the field of view a little bit, see how this changes things. That's higher field of view. I think that's probably good. Let me see how it looks. Turn it widescreen. Oh yeah, it has stuff off screen. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to zoom it in more so it seems like less square. Actually wonder, let me try this. That make it better or worse? I think it definitely is nicer with the bigger field of view. Let's see if I can put this closer give the illusion. Oh, that looks... Yeah, that makes it look like it's going way faster.
I like that the best. Close enough that it's got the widescreen perspective. It's got a nice effect. I like, yeah, I like that perspective. Okay, we're gonna do anti-aliasing be just because we can afford it. We're gonna create a variable called sum. And we're basically gonna loop over um, surrounding pixels or sub pixels. So basically repeat everything multiple times, which is multi-sampling. And we average those samples and we get anti-aliasing. Put that in a for loop. And then this becomes um, sum plus equals c. I think I might do a little bit of an actual gray background. And then, oh yeah, sum becomes divided by the number of pixel samples, which is 9 here. Alright, so now this is doing 9 times the work for nothing. So what we're going to do, so the actual main part of the anti-aliasing here is offsetting the pixel samples by this. Now let's see how that looks. So we actually want to zoom in in Paint or some program to make sure pixels are actually correct. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. Uh, I do think it is supposed to be like... ...times 0.7 though, so it doesn't go all the way. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Now we got anti-aliasing, oh, so let's check this. I actually think this one was better. Nah, that one was blurred a little bit. This one is perfect. Or nearly perfect. I can't remember what the proper pixel offsets are. Think about this. The offset of each pixel. Both sides. So this. Oh my god. This is doing. Yeah, it's point times point five, I think. Um, hold on. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, okay, you know what, let's just, <laughs> we're gonna actually pull out the calculator and calculate these pixel sizes. So let's say our screen size is a thousand, um, this is gonna go from, the Y is gonna go from negative one to one, so there's a total of distance of two between the screen size of a thousand, so we've got point zero zero two pixel size. So there's 0 .002 difference um, between each of these pixel samples. So this should be 0 .02 and 0 .02. Um, or in the case of screen Y being a thousand. So we want 0 .01. Oh, and then it actually goes across to 0 0.02. Okay, yeah, never mind. I remember this. So this is, yeah, 
0.77 was the best I had. There we go. That's probably the best anti-aliasing we're going to get. The sub pink pixel sampling. And it looks pretty damn good if I do say so myself. A glorious 60 FPS. And we could also do it at 1000 FPS if we wanted to. Hold on a second. Oh my god. Oh that, this is, so this is part of what I hate about OpenGL and GPUs. What it just did there, yeah, you can see it rush ahead now. So, the GPU just sent out a whole bunch of these shader draw calls to render this, like when I set it to render at a thousand FPS, it started sending out a thousand of these frame draw call, render frame draw calls. And then the GPU didn't expect that it was going to process so much. So then as you saw, it was slowly chopping along, rendering at like a hundred frames per second, even though it was getting thousands of draw calls. These draw calls built up in a buffer, and then it very slowly pumped them out. And now we're back, to, yeah, now we're back to normal. So did we, did we drop any frames there? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, OBS lagged out. Anyways, we are gonna... Why did I open Task Manager? We are gonna take a video of this now. Also, uh, we can make this perfectly looping. This is the way it is. Uh, the way it loops around, we can calculate how long it's gonna take to loop around from one side to the other. actually negative time right here based on so we can just apply all this right here so negative 3.14 because this is an angle we're multiplying it by pi this will now speed it up yeah too fast but the reason why we did that is just so that now we can actually calculate um, how long it's going to take. So now it should be taking two seconds to do a full loop. So now if we multiply this by uh, three, it'll take six seconds to do a full loop. Oh shit, never mind. If we divide it by three, it'll take six seconds to do a full loop. And now, yeah, I think that is fast enough. Let's count from the yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I believe that's right. Okay. Let's capture a video of it just to test. We'll set this for six seconds. And now it should loop perfectly. Assuming our calculations are correct. Let's look at it. And then next, we're going to go and take a high resolution uh, wallpaper screenshot. Ooh, what is that? Does it loop? It doesn't look like. No? Okay. How close is that? Is it jumping backwards or forwards? Oh, it's jumping backwards a little bit. I wonder if that's, um... That could be our 3.14 instead of proper pi. Could be the precision error showing up. Get the actual value of pi. Also, I know this is running laggy. I just set it to a low frame rate to give my GPU a break. Uh, 
Let's try this again. I almost wonder if the screen recorder isn't timing it perfectly either. Like, I wonder if it's starting and stopping the recording here a little bit. Delayed? I had to guess it's Pi, though. No, it's still doing it. Jumping. Hmm. I need to scale it a little bit back. Hold on, I want to delete these uh, videos I'm not using so I don't keep playing them by accident. I don't know what to call this, like color mill or something. I'm almost wondering if I should just change the screen recorder time. Something different than six seconds. I wonder if this isn't hitting proper 60. So let's, t let's just try 5.9 instead if it's a little bit slow instead of changing the shader let's just change the recording oh I think that's it No, there is a little jump. Ooh. Better though. It's hard to tell if it's jumping forwards or backwards there. Precision was wrong. Jumping backwards still there? Yeah, it is still jumping backwards. Oh, so that, yeah, that means it's going too long. it's not hitting the frame rate. So if it's jumping backwards, time is too far ahead. But doing this should make it better.
Oh, I think that. I think that's perfectly looping. Or nearly perfect. Nice. Yep. There we go. Okay, let's start with the wallpaper. Let's go with the wallpaper version now. Everything all good on OBS's end yet? Yeah, haven't dropped any frames. Okay, let's go. High resolution. Let's just capture one here. Maybe I should actually raise the epsilon for these screenshot shots. that one. Oh, let's capture one at a different length along. And now we're back at the beginning. Hey, Splat Codes. Hope your cat's doing well. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna call this color wheel, because <laughs> that's literally what it is. All right. Well, there's our shader art for March 5th. That's our thirteenth uh, shader art here, getting on three weeks. Hell yeah! Oh, all right. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is just the beginning. 
of the shader art stream. So this was our first 3D uh, art. And oh my god, I cannot wait to dive into all the different ray tracing. So I'm not sure when, but maybe tomorrow, uh, one of these th one of these shader art streams, we're going to make a full out path deferred path tracer, basically as a framework, so that any of the other 3D ray traced scenes I want to do in the future, I can just throw into this um, these li this little shader framework. I've done a lot of similar stuff on Shader Toy. Anyone who's watched this stream a lot knows I make lots of ray tracers, and I'm probably going to keep making lots of ray tracers. So, yeah, stick around for these shader coding streams if you like that. Uh, the wallpaper version of the and the animation effect that was on stream today is going to be up on my Twitter if you want the wallpaper version. If you have any questions about code or effects, I'm always talking about code on Discord. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream, and I will see you around. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a stream tonight. We might finish up the Master Chief Collection campaign, or so the Halo Combat Evolves campaign. Uh, I have some chores and stuff. I have, to, I have some cleaning I have to do, and I have to make dinner. So, we'll see after that. Thank you for watching, though. Hope everyone and their cats and dogs and everyone, whoever, wherever you are, is doing well. See you around.